Well, either Satan really doesn't want you to hear this, or I'm just really crazy and couldn't get here on time. So I apologize for being late, but it has been a crazy day. Um, so I've been really thinking about um, some of the stuff that Brother Mike's been teaching. And so uh, I've heard several other pastors over the past several weeks, and they, they're going through Revelation as well. So it brought me back to Revelation 2. So if you have your Bible, turn to Revelation 2. But uh, the question that keeps coming to mind is when I got saved and then the next time I went to church and I sang the hymns and the songs, I actually understood them. They actually made sense to me. And here lately, there's a few songs that's really been touching me and it kind of took me back to when I got saved on how much I loved to sing. Trust me, you do not want me to sing, but I love it. I love singing. So in, in my truck, I sing and I just have a really great time, just me and God, which is probably the best way to have it. But my question is, do we understand what we're singing? When we come to church and we're at worship and we're getting ready to hear Brother Mike speak, do we understand what we're singing? Or is it out of habit? How many of you know a lot of the hymns just like, you don't even have to look at the words. We don't have to have them up here. You know them. But is it habit? And I dare say sometimes it is. Sometimes it is just that. I know, this, I know the words. I can just sit back there and I can go along with the words but they re I'm not really singing them to God. And sometimes I think we forget our first love. So in Revelations, well, actually, before I start that, I wanted to go over a couple choruses. Think about these lyrics. Have thy own way, Lord, have thy own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I'm waiting, yielded, and still. Most of us could quote that. Most of us could sing along with it. But are you really wanting God's way or your way? Are you the clay and allowing him to mold you because I'm telling you right now, the world will try to mold you. It will try to get you busy. It will try to keep you from praying. It will try to keep you from doing everything that you should be doing. But we need God to be the potter and allow him to mold us to what he wants. I did not want to ever get up in front of anybody. But I had to allow God to change me to do what he wanted me to do. I'm, I'm happy sitting right back there and playing on the computer and doing, making all this stuff work. I, I'm as happy as I can be. But that's not what God called me to do. Yes, I do it, and I can do it, but he's got other things for me to do. Lead me, Lord, I'll follow anywhere you open up the door. Let me know your wisdom, show me the things I've never seen before. Do you want to see things you've never seen before? I want to see God move in such a way that it blows my mind. I've got a really good imagination. But I want him to do something that I physically and mentally can't do. Because then I can say, it was God. I had nothing to do with this. I couldn't do this. He deserves the glory. Isaiah 43, 7 tells us we are created for his glory, not ours. This is not about us. I am constantly, constantly, constantly telling people at work, your position is not about you. It's about taking people, care of people under you and about taking care of the mission that the government has given us to do. It is not about you. We, as military members, have been asked to go above and beyond 
what is normal. We are set to a higher standard. If you saw a military member doing something wrong, you would be devastated because you expect them to do better. If you see it just an ordinary person do something wrong, you're like, you're disappointed. But if you see a military member do that, it's devastating. We are held to a higher calling. Folks, you're in the army. You're in the Lord's army. We are all called to a higher calling. We are expected to be better than the norm. And we need to be about asking God, where do you want me to be now? What do you want me to do? Let me know your wisdom. Show me the things I've never seen before. Lord, I want to be your witness and you can take what's wrong and make it right. We are to be the witnesses. I've heard many people, well, I, you know, I just, I witnessed by my life. Really? Is that all you're doing? We need to be telling people about what God has done for you. Because you know what? I know a lot of really good people. And they most of the time do the right thing but they do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Therefore, good people are going to hell. We need to be about giving them God's message. When this song first came out, I, um, it's still one of my favorites. But I love this song. I played it till my daughter said, please don't play that anymore. Let's play something else. But I can only imagine what it'll be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? I honestly try to imagine what it's going to be like when I see him face to face. And I have that same question. Will I be dancing for joy or will I be just bowing at his feet? I don't know. He knows but I can't wait to get there. But it's not my time. It's not my time. He still has stuff for me to do here. Will I stand in your presence or on my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah or will I be able to speak at all? I can honestly thank that I'm going to be absolutely speechless. You know, I hear a lot of people, well, I'm going to ask God this. Why does a giraffe's neck so long? Why does, you know, why are these things happening? I don't think you're going to care. I think you're going to be in such awe of who he is. It is not going to matter. And I can't wait to get there. I can't wait. Well, that's the first sermon. So um, I know in Revelations 2, it talks about that they, the Ephesians had lost their first love. I don't want to talk about losing your first love. I want you to return to your first love. So that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about tonight. So in Revelations 2, first verse, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, these things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven gold lampstands, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and your, that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have preserved and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary." He commends them. And folks, a lot of people commend me.
for what I do at work. I can't take credit for it. Most of the time, I'm just doing what I'm told. We have to understand that we can be doing good things for God and still not be doing what he has asked. I had to be on a letter of counseling today. And for the military, that, that's not really harsh, harsh punishment, but it's not good punishment. But it was the fact that the person was doing things but not what he was told to do. We can do great things, but if God didn't tell us to do that, then who's it being done for? You can say it's being done for God, and it can be done in the church, but did God specifically have you do that thing? I have to make sure that I am called to do what God wants me to do. When I first got saved, I saw a bunch of stuff in the church that needed to be done. So I started doing it. And I was absolutely wearing myself out. But I thought, this is, I'm, it needs to be done, so I'm supposed to be doing it. And I had a wise guy come to me and tell me. He goes, hey, he goes, you getting tired of doing that? And I'm like, yeah, kind of, like, but, but nobody else is doing it. He goes, two things. One, if you're not called to do it, you're probably robbing somebody else of getting the blessing of doing it. You're wearing yourself out and you're not doing what God calls you to do. So quit it. I'm like, okay, yeah, makes sense. And when I did, I'm like, hey, I'm going to step back from these two things. And, and I told the leadership, and guess what? Somebody stepped in and started doing it. And they said, yeah, we've been filled the call to do it, but we didn't think there was a need. If you have a talent, let us know. If we have a need in this church, we need to be better at letting people know because people are looking at where God is calling them to do things for him. And it could be a small thing. It could be a really small thing to you and to others, but if God's calling you to do it, it's a big thing. He's got the plan. So they were commended. And it was impressive that they were enduring hardship for these things. So as he commends them, he talks to them and he says, look, I know your works. So if you ever think you're doing something in secret, God knows. Everybody in the church doesn't need to know. God already knows. But on the flip side of that, if you think you're getting away with something because nobody else knows, guess what? You're wrong. God knows. Trust me, when I think I've gotten away with it, the Holy Spirit tells me, nah, we know. We saw it. And usually that's when I have to repent and go back and ask for forgiveness. Because God knows. But point number two is in verse four. The danger of losing your first love. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. The word left here means you turned and walked away. I've done that. And God is dealing with me, has dealt and is still dealing with me. When I do something that I know I'm not supposed to do, this verse comes to mind. Is it because I have it memorized? No. It's because the Holy Spirit reminds me. And that's always a good thing. But despite what they had done in their works, he pointed out that they had lost their first love. Sometimes when I'm singing and I'm just going along with the words, 
I have lost my first love because it's not about, I'm not singing to God, I'm just singing at God. When we are not right before Him, we have lost our first love. We need to make sure our relationship is right with Him. We've talked about this, or Brother Mike talks about this all the time. Am I right with my fellow man? Am I right with my family? Am I right with God? Am I right with my co-workers? Am I right with my family? That's a big one. You know, I can work with people all day long, get frustrated, but deal with them and no big deal. Family members? They're a lot harder. A lot harder to deal with. I heard a comedian say one time, he goes, you know what? If you're not married, you need to marry somebody you don't love. Because that way when they get mad, it's no big deal. But we do love them. And it's hard. Confrontation is hard. I don't like it. Sometimes we have to do it. I don't like when God confronts me, but sometimes he has to do it. Going on in verse 5. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. Do you guys remember when you first got saved? Do you remember how excited you were? Do you remember what you wanted to do? Like I said, if there was something neat in the church, I did it. I was there almost every night. There was one night a week that I actually had to do laundry, but one night a week that I wasn't at the church doing something. I was so excited. People that knew me before knew there was something different. That was my prime time of witnessing to people because they saw a difference. Too many people now go, oh, you're a Christian. You know, it's no big deal. Well, yes, it is. Now, instead of my actions, I have to use my words to tell others about him because they already know I'm a Christian. They don't know who I was before. But that's part of my story, who I was and who I am now. The last time I preached, I talked about who we are in Christ. We are more than conquerors. There's life's trials. I got it. There's some really hard things. I understand. But we will be victorious we will get to go home. One night before I was preaching, I'm like, God, you know, I'm so excited. You can just take me home now. I'm ready to go. And I didn't hear it audibly. But I really felt the Holy Spirit tell me I was being selfish. And I'm like, wait a minute. Am I not supposed to be ready? Can I not be excited about being ready? And what I heard was this. Look around you on how many else that's not ready. Right in your own family that is not ready. And now tell me you're not being selfish wanting to come home. You've got a job to do. We all have a job to do. We need to remember where we had fallen. Repent and do the first works. Or else I will come quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, and that you have hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. We have to repent and turn back. When my kids were little, we bought them a little robot, R2-D2. Most people know who that is. But it's about this tall, 
and it rolled around and it took voice commands. I know in 2001, that's a crazy idea of voice commands. Now you, everything has a voice command. But back then, it was kind of state of the art. But it wasn't perfected, needless to say. And sometimes the little robot would get confused, especially if several people are trying to talk to it at one time. It would get confused and it would get stubborn and it would just sit there and shake. Every time you'd say something, it'd just shake its head. And what you had to do is tap it on the side and say, R2, behave yourself. And it would reset itself and then it would start taking voice commands. I don't know how many times God has tapped me on the head and said, behave myself and try to reset me and get me back to where I would listen to him. Too often, most of the time, our problems that we have, especially in relationships, is communication. You would think I'd be better at it, but I'm not. We have to be able to communicate with one another. We have to be able to communicate with the lost. But we have to be able to communicate with God. And part of that is reading your Bible every day and letting Him speak to you through it. Part of that is pray. Pray without ceasing, right? That's all the time. An attitude of prayer. Satan will get you too busy to do either one of those. But you must keep that relationship going. So back to my question. Do you remember what it was like when you first were saved? The joy that overflowed you. The peace that passed understanding. I knew for a fact I was going to hell. I knew it, but it took me two years of knowing that fact before I finally accepted Christ. But the night that happened, December 7th, 1991, at 7.02, before the service ever started, song was playing and I walked down front. I remember it, but too often I forget and I let Satan and this world take that from me. Don't allow Satan to steal your joy. Turn, seek God, and make sure you're helping others do the same because we have something nobody else on this earth has. And that's hope and a God that loves us. In my previous AFSCs, which is my career fields, um, when I was in Intel, I had to study Islam and understand how they thought so I could figure out what the enemy was going to do when we were in Afghanistan. What a dark miserable religion that you cannot know that you're going to be saved. You have no clue. You can do absolutely everything right according to their religion. And if Allah says no, it's no. I am grateful to a God that loves me so much. It doesn't matter what I do. It matters what his son did for me. That's incredible, folks. Let's tell everyone else around us about the Savior that we all know and love and get back to loving him like we should and loving others like he did. He gave his life for sinners. I told the Sunday school class before, I love my kids, love them to death, but ain't no way I'm giving up one of my kids for you. God did that for me. It took me a long time to understand that God loved me. Make sure others understand that God loves them as well. Will you stand?
Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you and thank you. And what a privilege that it is to be able to read your word and understand what your son did for us. Words can't even describe the feeling of knowing that I get to come home. This is not my home here. And I get to come home and be with you in glory. As the song says, I can only imagine. But Lord, I just ask that you would give us all joy and peace. And if there's something that we're not doing, Lord, just I ask the Holy Spirit to convict us, allow us to repent. And Lord, we just turn back to you. You are always there with open arms. Like the father of the prodigal son, he went running to his son. Lord, you come running to us. You found us. You drew us to you. I still don't fully understand why you love me, but what a joy to know that you love me. Lord, I just ask that you be with us this week. Lord, I just ask for divine appointments for each and every one of us in here today that somebody would need to know about you and that you would put them in your, our path, that you would give us the open door and that they would seek you and put their trust in you. Lord, we just ask that you get glory, honor, and praise in everything that we do this week, tonight, and forevermore. And in your precious holy name we pray, amen.